All right. Let's see if I can make a quick adjustment to this. And All right. Am I in view? You're a little black. I'm a little black. Is that better? A little bit? Better? I'll see you after class. Okay, take a moment to just center yourself in your body. You can put your hands somewhere on your body, your belly and your chest or hands into prayer. Take a moment to just feel your feet on the floor, find your breath. Show up right here or right now. Know that you have the support of your friends as we work on the alignment of our bodies to let energy flow more fully, more completely, more optimally through your system. Addressing any places where there may be an energy leak or places you might not even be aware of that um, just aren't flowing quite as well as we want. So start at your feet. Make sure your feet are pointed straight ahead. Merrick is right today. We are going to work on shoulders. So biceps that come from here attach up into the shoulder. All of the rotator cuff muscles that determine where our arm is in space and then how our shoulder blades relate to how the arm bone comes in and the shoulder blade connection to your spine. So we'll dress all of those pieces a little bit. Go ahead and start with a shoulder shrug today. Slide them up and push them down. And I'm gonna have you just pull your arms out away from your body slightly so that you can let the head of the arm bone be in an optimal position in the shoulder. So just slightly away from your body, slide them up to your ears and then press them down. Slide them up, press them down. And then keep your arms away from your body and let's let the rotator cuff so muscles that wrap from the arm bone through the space in your shoulder behind you up over the shoulder all those muscles that connect the arm bone to the shoulder let them pull the head of the arm bone into the shoulder socket as you rotate your arms back so rotator cuff muscles keeping the shoulder blades in a good position bring your arms together and then back out, keeping those elbows out at about 30 degrees from your body. Just go slowly. Maybe there's some crunches in there. Nine. And 10. Then let your arms come down, up and forward and around. Big shoulder roll. And backwards.
and release. Fold your fingers to your palms, bring your hands right to your temples. Elbows all the way together so they touch and all the way back. Keep going 20 of these elbow curls, letting your shoulder blades work like a hinge coming off your back and be mindful here of the position of your rib cage. So it's easy to let the rib cage pop forward and be overextended in the front. And I want your rib cage to be like a cylinder over your pelvis. So as you let the shoulder blades wrap around your rib cage, keep them there. And release. Fold your fingers to your palms, bring your arms out to the side, and then float your arms up. Collarbones wide. Once again, check your rib cage. Did it just pop forward? Can you keep the front ribs kind of knit together? Lift the back of your heart up so that your shoulder blades can rest on your rib cage, and then a little bit of a squeeze between your shoulder blades just to activate that mid trap and rhomboid slightly. Circle forward, 40 circles. And backwards, palms up, same thing. Strong elbows. And release. Come down onto your hands and knees. And I want you to play with bringing your shoulder blades together on your back and then pushing away from the floor. So you can let the shoulders sink together. And then that lets your chest come forward, lets your shoulder blades retract onto your back. And then when you push away from the floor, then you use the muscles in the side body that help control the position of the shoulder blade. Good. Keep your spine in a really good position in neutral. Slight curve at the low back, gentle rounding at the upper back. And then just lower down through the shoulder and then press away from the floor and feel how that pulls your whole rib cage up. Good. Let it sink down and press down and press. Now if you have some kind of scoliosis or something where one shoulder blade does is elevated or rotated or doing something different on one side than the other because of the position of your spine and your ribs, these can be really good. I'm going to have you do a lot more work by taking one hand up and then do this just on one side. And also pay attention to your elbow. Elbows can be one of those places where you can have energy leaks. So you can be bent at your elbow or hyperextended at your elbow. Those are two places the elbow can move too much. So if you're bent at the elbow, more tricep needs to happen to straighten the arm. If your elbow easily hyperextends, then you need to be more of a brace with your bicep and pull that elbow into a little bit of a bend so that it's not hyperextended here. And then go ahead and lower yourself down and press yourself up so that you're working one side of that shoulder blade sliding around your rib cage. And do about 10 of those. Shoulder push ups. And then other side neutral spine, neutral pelvis. Even find your glutes here. So that you're pressing from your glutes down into your knees to help keep your pelvis level as you squeeze and press.
down and up. And then release. Come down onto your back. down just a bit. Bring your elbows about 30 degrees out from your shoulders again. So slightly out. And then hug your shoulder blades in toward your spine so that the muscles that are hugging the arm bone into the socket are helping and then the rhomboid and mid trap that are in your back get to pull the edge of the shoulder blade closer to each other. Find those muscles on both sides right now. Slide them in and release. Hug it in, release. So you have muscles that wrap around your arm, come through the space in the shoulder, and then up toward the neck, and then muscles that go into the middle of your back that helps stabilize those shoulder blades. Squeeze them, find those muscles, and release. Squeeze, release. And then keeping your arms out at that about 30 degree angle, let them rotate back and then back up to the ceiling. You can let them come all the way into your belly if you want. <clears throat> Internal and external rotation. So now that we have the shoulder blades set in a pretty good spot, resting on your back, flat on your back, rotating the arm bone in and out. Those are the muscles, again, of the rotator cuff. If the shoulder is in a really good position, the rotator cuff works well. If the shoulder is forward or off your back, then the rotator cuff tends to shut down and get weak. The challenge is then you go to throw a ball or abduct and externally rotate your arm, the same move that we're doing right now. And if the, the rotator cuff can't do that well and the muscles that stabilize the shoulder blade aren't working so well, then there's a possibility of injury occurring. It also sh limits the space where the muscles need to come through or up and over in where the shoulder blade and arm bone meet, and that can create impingement. So we want optimal alignment for optimal space so that those muscles can slide and glide through the spaces that we need to in our shoulder. Good, reach your arms up to the sky. Now, as you bring your arms up over your head, the shoulder blades have to come kind of wide off your back. So the shoulder blade actually has to come out toward your armpit a little bit. And we don't want it to come so far out. There's a balance here. But we do need it to rotate out to the side. So let it come out to the side a little bit as you bring your arms up. Let your spine get long. Let your belly stay um, a bit taut so that there's just a little bit of maybe 50% activation here. So there's good stability in your spine. And then bring your arms back up. Be able to take a full breath. Bring your arms up over your head. Touch the floor and back up. Excellent. Roll onto your belly. And let's talk about if the shoulders have gotten into this position, which is very common, 
then the pec minor is often extra short or tight. Maybe the pec major also that comes across the front of your chest, but we're going to let that open by either arms bent or arms straight down on your belly. So come down first, and then you're going to do a scorpion leg. So I'm going to go arms straight out because that's going to be the most pull on my shoulder. Then right leg comes up. Good tone through my belly as I reach that leg back and just let that pull on the muscles in the front of the shoulder where that shoulder connects to the chest to let those muscles open and then release it back down, switching sides, lift, good control, find the glute. You can let the knee turn out a little bit to help that glute activate. Open it up. Now my right shoulder is what I'm really working on, letting it pull through the front of the chest on that right side. Breathe. And then return. Let's do two more on each side. Take it up and over. That knee can go out a little bit. Good control through your low back. If you feel too much in your low back, use a little more belly, use a little more glute, and then let it be in that shoulder. Big full breaths, allowing length to happen in the front of the pec. Release. Second side, second time. Up and over. Breathe. Release. Once more, lift, open, pulling through the chest. And return, last one, lift, open, and breathe. Return, and then take both arms forward, coming into a position for a sleeper stretch. You're going to put your chin on your shoulder, so we're going to go into the internal rotation of that arm. Now, lots of us have tight external rotators because of the position, or maybe there's an injury. So then the internal rotation is hard. So I want you to put your left hand on top of your right wrist if you're this way or whatever top arm you have on top of the bottom and gently press down. With your chin, you're going to hold your shoulder down to the floor so that the arm bone can rotate but not the shoulder. And then you can do a little bit of a press release here. So pressing your arm up into your hand this way and then resist it with this top arm so that you get this little PNF stretching neuromuscular activation lift and then go into that lengthen up into it resist and into the stretch breathe Hopefully, as we put the shoulders in a better position, your body knows that it's safe to release the joint capsule, the nerves, things that can keep it held too tight. Open that up. 
let it rotate a couple of times, and then switch sides. Sleeper stretch on the other side, coming down onto your side, putting the bottom arm out, using your chin to hold your shoulder down, and then going into the sleeper stretch. Now you can use that top arm to create a little resistance as you push the bottom arm up into it so that you activate the external rotators and then let them release as you go into the internal rotation. Press up, gently pull down. Lift and lower. You can see maybe that my two sides are really different. I'm guessing that's probably true for a lot of you also. My right shoulder is much tighter. I think there's probably some old injuries in there from volleyball that maybe made that joint capsule tighten up. But whenever I work on it, I get a little more range. Come on out of it. More comfort in the shoulder itself. Come onto your belly when you're ready. Toenail side of your feet down, hands right by uh, the, the armpits, so low, and elbows flared again about 30 degrees out, outside of your body. So we're gonna use that really good position of the shoulder to help the arm bone hug into the shoulder and then you're going to lift your shoulders up and away from the floor by pressing down. So don't just pull up, but as I push down into the floor, that should make the shoulders lift. So if you're using the right muscles, just play with that for a second. So not just lift in the shoulder, but use the pressing down into the floor to let the shoulder push up and away from the floor. And as you do that, begin to let your chest come up. Let your shoulder blades move down your back and push up into whatever version of a cobra feels okay to you. Shoulder blades moving down your back, belly getting long, good support for your lower body. And then lower yourself, control it down. Nice. Again, press down into the floor, feel the muscles that are around the shoulder blade and the arm bone, support the position of the shoulder, and use the pressure of your elbows down into the floor to let the shoulder lift up and away from the floor as you begin to push into that cobra. And release. One more time. Pressing down, using the pressure down to the floor to let the shoulders lift, coming on up. And then pressing back, take it into a V knee, bringing the right foot up, walking your right hand all the way forward, letting length happen in your side body, hips move back. Take a deep breath and make as much space between your hip and shoulder as you can. Hips move back, heart moves forward. Big full breath. And then switch your feet and switch your hands. Hips move back, heart moves forward. Lengthen. And switch. Right leg coming up, right hand moving away from you. Sit back, take a deep breath as that inner groin opens. 
the serratus and the lat, the muscles that pull the arm down, they connect from the trunk up into the arm. Let all that open and have space and switch. And then both hands on the floor, cats and dogs, or cat cow, round and arch your back. Connecting those shoulders into your hips, tucking your tailbone all the way under, find your glutes, then lift, letting them come down, let the shoulder blades sink together. Oh, we have a visit from the ninjas really quickly. Mommy, I my black socks. I don't know, sweetie. Round and arch. Can you say good morning and then go back up? Good like morning. Okay. No, daddy time. Thank you. Bye, ninjas. Round and arch. And then have a seat. Both legs out straight on the floor. Feel your thigh bones root down. And then take it all the way up. Up and down. Keep going. Kathy says, so cute. That's pretty regular at my house these days. All the way up, all the way down. My kids are lucky enough to have a costume closet that rivals my Burning Man closet lately, and they have been in every outfit you can imagine. One of the benefits of them watching a little more TV than I like is that they watch this Utah family that's called Ninja Kids, and they are always coming up with things to film. So the kids are being very creative with their costumes and their ideas, and it's rubbing off on my children. All the way up, all the way down, 10 more. So thinking of all of those muscles now, up into the lat, into the shoulder, underneath the shoulder blade, in between the shoulder blades, all those muscles that are needing to do this work. And the connection, we talked about the cross connection across the front and the connection across the back in the last couple classes, the spiral lines. Those are all working. We're going to use that right now as you go into a sitting floor twist. I'm going to pull my leg under and cross it over. You may choose to just keep that leg extended. Your choice. Let's go uh, left leg crossing over. I'm not going to mirror you. Just do the same one. Left one crossing over. Left hand behind you. And I want you to think of the connection between your left shoulder and your right hip as you bring those two closer together coming across this spiral line of fascia on your back. Big full breath in, press open as your spine twists, root to rise, but really think of that left shoulder, right glute. How do they get closer together in this position? Untwist, switch sides, right crossing over left. If you want to tuck that left underneath, and then here's that cross again, this time the left shoulder coming across right shoulder to left butt on the back. 
Think of that line of fascia between the right shoulder and the left glute. How do they get closer together? Coming all the way across your back. Big full breaths, fully in, fully out. And untwist. Coming out of that, come onto your hands and knees, press up into a downward facing dog pose. Make sure that your base is wide enough, tuck your toes under and press up and back. Shoulders into hips. Prioritize the position of your spine. So if you need to bend your knees to keep that arch in your low back, stay lifted. If you know your upper back pulls easily down toward the floor, be more of a container. Go into that little bit of rounding in your upper back. Find your breath. Big full breaths here. The shoulder blades in downward dog need to come toward the armpit and then push up and then lengthen collarbones get wide still so that you have that rotation out of the shoulder blade and the movement up of the shoulder and then a relaxing away from the ears so all three of those things need to happen here nice Come forward into your push-up position and then go into that shoulder blade, melt and press again. Now, you can even see in my body I have work to do here. As I melt the shoulders, they come a little bit more off my back than I want. You could do this with knees down if you need to, but if you can do it in a full plank, do it. So the strength of my serratus, this muscle right here, is not quite what I want it to be. So things like this is a good exercise for me, hopefully for you too, so that that gets stronger as I press down into the floor and try to make my spine more round. Down and up. Do 10 of those. Was that challenging for people? Yeah. One more set. Coming up, arms strong and straight. You can be a little bit out so that you have that optimal position in the arm bone. Then let them melt and then try to round your upper back as you push your hands into the floor to let those shoulder blades get stronger, the muscles on the side get stronger. See if you can see between the left and the right, do you have one that is even harder? And rest. Nice work. All right, grab your chair and come up to standing or your block. So keep a really good spinal position, shoulder position. So notice again what your shoulders are doing and I want them to be pressing down so that you're using those same muscles that we just found on the side that strengthen that good shoulder position. And then take your left leg up. Lean your right leg so that your hip is going right over the arch 
of your foot if you can work that knee towards straight unless you know that you go into hyperextension then you need more calf muscle find where that can be stable and then work this back leg strong and straight find your glute go ahead and turn it out to the side a little bit see if you can really find your butt muscle and then keep that glute and rotate that inner thigh back up do that a couple of times out try not to move your pelvis and then in knee out in find that glute pull that leg up strong leg behind you what's happening in your shoulders are they still pressing good activation through your core and let that leg come down second side float the other leg up square your hips the hip joint or greater trochanter of your hip right over the arch of your foot square it as much as possible straighten that back leg get strong through your shoulders through your belly and then rotate that knee out do your best to keep your hips square as you rotate the leg out and in oh my hip just popped good let that leg come down one more time float it up hip square gentle rounding in your upper back slight arch in your lower back pressing through your shoulders then rotate the leg out keep the hips square in out in strong leg attitude all the way back through that foot good stay there so now I have left hip right shoulder lifting up and forward hold and breathe think of that left butt right back of the shoulder coming closer together get them as high as possible and release them down second side lift do we have rotations on this side still yes Good rotations and then right hip left shoulder get them closer to each other lift them up as high as they'll go without dropping your low belly lift 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 and release go ahead and come up to standing for a moment just check your standing posture I'm hopeful that your shoulders feel like they are sitting back more that maybe you have better connection into your back body and your glutes does everyone feel like whoa my chest is really lifted yeah how about your breathing can you take a bigger breath All right, interlace your fingers. Let's do a little more shoulder, up front shoulder, open, take it open. You could also grab this way, but even as I do that, you can see my ribs wanted to just get out of the way. So correct your ribs and then open your shoulders. So hands interlaced or elbow to elbow. Let that just open. And then take it into a forward fold, slight bend at your knees, bend over, open those shoulders. That's going to pull a little more into that pec. 
Peck Minor mostly. Then use your butt muscles again. Rise all the way up. One more time. Switch your arms if you are this way. Correct your rib cage. Slight bend at the knees. Bend forward. Feel that pull on your shoulder. Three breaths. Fully in. Fully out. And up. Good. And then arm glides here. Release that way. Take them up. Reach your arms up over your head. Touch. And down. Okay, have a seat on your bottom one more time. We're going to do a couple more moves, taking the arm bones behind us, working those shoulders to stabilize on your back. So, come down onto your mat, take your hands behind you, hands facing towards your hips, or they could also be out if that's more comfortable. But if you can get them there, and then you're just going to press your hips up into a table, but keep the arm bones hugging behind you. So pressing down into the floor will help the arm bone hug into the socket, and then the shoulder blades support behind your heart as you lift into the table. It's going to pull on the bicep, a little bit on the pec. Hold it and breathe. Just feel how it is to take that arm bone back behind you like that. And then come down. We're going to do two more of those. Hands behind you. Feet planted. Find your glutes. Press from your glutes down into the floor. Lift your hips. Hold and breathe. How is it from one side to the other? Release. Last one. Little squeeze behind your heart. Press down through the floor. The more you press down, the better position into the shoulder it is. Lift, hold. And release. Go ahead and wiggle your wrists around. And go into prayer and press and then bring them up this way and open them that way. Just go back and forth there a little bit. Nice. And then come on to your back again. Hold behind your knee into foot circles, point flexes. Let's link it all together. Shoulders pulling down and back a little bit. And then circle your foot 20 times all the way around.
think of that left shoulder right leg connection if the right leg is what you're circling right foot Reverse. Point and flex. And switch sides. Big circles. Once again, that butt muscle on the right connecting to the back of the left shoulder. Even here, think of that connection. Reverse your circles if you haven't. 20 circles. Point and flex. And extend both legs out straight. Feet wider than your hips. Do a few femur rotations out and in. And then same thing with your arms. Arms out to the side. Rotate your arm in the socket. And then set the shoulder blades underneath you. Collarbones stay wide and settle yourself into Shavasana, letting your body balance on the sacrum, tuck the shoulders under, full deep breaths. If you want to go into static back, you're more than welcome to pull your legs up and put them over the block if that feels better to you. As you let your body begin to feel supported by the floor, know that all that work to bring awareness and balance into the shoulders gives you amazing information about where you can strengthen, how you can push, where you can move. The shoulders are pretty complicated joint and how they tie into the neck and upper body the ability to have so much freedom in a joint and still have the stability that we need to push ourselves off the floor or up out of a chair or just be able to have our shoulders rest over our rib cage and again, how the shoulders tie into the spine and the neck. It's a lot. It's a lot to, to learn about, to manage, to feel. So take that good work that we've done as a group and let it just be amplified. Finding the muscles that support the arm bone in the shoulder socket so that you have the most amount of space 
and the balance between movement and stability. As you deepen your breath and just allow your shoulders to be supported by the floor. Go into that more quiet space. Be open to any new information that's arising for you around your shoulders. how that ties into your torso or how your shoulders also tie into the rest of your arms, your elbows and your wrists. Find the space between each breath. Bring the breath into your back body, into the space between your shoulders and allow it to just expand wider. If you would like to stay in this quiet space, I support you to turn off your computer. If you'd like a few more minutes to visit, slowly allow your body to come back to awareness, move it around a little bit, and I'll bring you back around.